श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार शिवाशदी गौरक Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So happy Ekadashi to everyone. Uh, nice day to discuss glories of Krishna. Every day is nice. This Ekadashi is even more auspicious. So thank you for joining. I know many devotees to different uh, brata today, and this is on top of it, but it's for a good purpose. So I think it's nice. So let's start with Mangla Charan. ओम ज्ञान तिमरंद ज्ञान जन शलाकया चक्षुर उन्मील ये ना तस्म श्री गुर्वे नम श्री चैतन्य मनोवीष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददाती स्वपदाति वंदेहम श्री गुरु श्री युतापद कमल श्री गुरून वैष्णवांश श्री रूप सागर जात सह गण रघुनाथ तम तम सजीव साइत सवधूत परिजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्री राधा कृष्ण पादान सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधो जगतपते गोपेश गोपि कांता राधा कांता नमस्ते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंशा कल्प तरिभा कृपा सिंधु पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जगत गुरु शिला प्रभु पाद की जय हरे कृष्ण feels like uh, we haven't had a class for so long i, uh, I think last class was on 28th of august has been what 10 11 days it feels like very very long gap <laughs> so this is it's just a sorry i was saying for us it's only it's even longer than that because we were not there in that class oh okay <laughs> yeah some of you were not there yes i know there was some uh, other activity going on last um, class that's okay uh, So let's start. Uh, we are discussing fourth chapter, and we have done uh, from four thirty to four twenty one last time. So let's do a quick recap. I know some of you were not there, but uh, through the recap, we'll get to know those verses. Okay, I should either ask who was there because I see Sumitra wasn't there, Maya Sumitra wasn't there, Priya Mataji, you were there last class. Yes, Prabhu, I was for some part. Yes. Oh, for some part. Okay. But I, I can. Um, if you want, I can try. You want to do this one for thirteen? Um. So. Uh, so. Uh. Basically, um, Prabhu Ji here it is saying that um, in the previous verse we saw before the for four point thirteen there were. Some people were going to demigods. Sorry, Prabhuji. Um, sorry, Prabhu. And some, some people. So basically, the previous verse was saying some people go to. We were talking about the demigods, um, and they try to basically going to the demigods. They fulfill their desire, uh, very fast, and so they can get good quick results. but um they are not getting the purificatory path but what happens to people who want to get to that path krishna is saying here in this um uh basically um oh sorry am i reading the wrong one sorry i'm reading the so this is for 12 matters because you were reading so i opened it but this is for 12 oh yes sorry am i reading yeah 4.13 4. yes yeah ma'am. so yeah right. he says he's um yeah created the four divisions so that's why krishna is saying 
for that purificatory path, Krishna has created those four divisions where he's saying Chatur Varnyam, so the four Varnas um, in that way are created. And um, which means um, he's saying the Chatur Varnyam, the four Varnas are created by me, Maestrum. Um, and based on those um, Vibhaga Shakas, so basically it is based on those divisions uh, based um, basically based on those divisions, uh, the divisions are um, basically there. So um, based on our guna, which is our basically our quality, and our karma, which is our action or comp competency you mentioned. Um, so those two things are there, um, basically um, to show us that um, you know uh, that they are the more more two important things there. So. Um, and then you mentioned um, the, then it says that tasya kartaram apiman. So, um, so although Krishna is saying he has created those four, the, the chatur varnim, the four divisions, um, he is vidhi akartam avyam. So even though he's created those four divisions, he's not actually involved and in, he's not part of it or he's not responsible uh, of it, so he's a non-dua kartam. He's not uh, really, um, you know, involved in that part. So you mentioned the, like an example, saying the government has created a jail, but it's the government is responsible. Is the, really the government responsible for creating the jail? Because um, not really, because uh, the people who are there, there's always people who are the law abiders and law breakers. So we have law breakers. So that's why there is the. Um, the jail is there and it's for the reform, reform, reformatory processes. Similarly, Krishna has also created this material creation for us who are not abiding, but then he has also created a, a, a way for us to get out of this material creation, which is that uh, Chaturvarnyam, which is that four, um, four divisions. So it's this is the process of getting out of the material world. And then you mentioned, um, even if you're competent, like say, for example, there's a doctor and the doctor can be very competent in doing the surgery, but the integrity part is questionable when he says like, you know, they'll act your, like, you know, I can cut, uh, he's giving um, treatment for your hand, but he's not, um, but he's cutting your stomach and getting rid of your kidney and selling it to someone or whatever. So that integrity is questionable. So that means that the guna is not there, but the karma is there, competency is there. And then, um, so, then Krishna is saying that these divisions are based on our competency, our karma, and the guna, like you said, refers to the quality, which is to maintain that integrity of that of our position. Um, and um, yeah, and then you went on to mentioning about the uh, the this ash the the four kisms, you know, brahmachari, grihastha, vanaprastha, and sannyas ashrams, where you specified that the varna is actually our internal, uh, external needs, which is according to our psychological nature. So according to our livelihood, we want to be an administrator or a brahmana, but, um, and then uh, the, but whereas the, um, the varna, the, 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 the ashrama is like, you know, take, we are all according to the different ashramas while we are taking shelter of um, the main goal is to achieve spiritual advancement, whereas that that's more to ashramas are taking you to the spiritual advancement, whereas varna is more entangling you to the material world. So there's that distinguishing between varna and ashram. Um, and then again, Krishna, where he says akartam is not, uh, you re-emphasize that even though he's saying, um, you know, that uh, we are, um, there are the four divisions there, um of the four the four chatur the chatur varnyams we are he's again saying that he's not involved in that so he's not responsible um he's not saying he's not pointing that you know i'm the brahmana is bad uh, is not good so you know i he's not gonna krishna is not going to like what he's doing but actually that brahmana for whatever reason he's um fallen down is because of his past deeds so Krishna is not actually directly involved in that. So is not involved in that. So it's because of our past deeds that, you know, 
that the brahmana has you know come to that position of falling down or whoever you know whatever varna there is um so that's what he means he's not responsible in that way we are actually are responsible of our own action in that way thank you mataji very nice <laughs> explain all the parts of the verse very beautifully thank you uh, just one question just for a discussion sake um so sometimes uh, basically coming from indian background uh, we can say some people say in india there's a caste system is this referring to the caste system just for the sake of discussion anyone else can say uh, maybe uh, mausi prabhu mataji uh, i know you are not there but just a general question just for our understanding people do blame india we have caste system is this verse referring to the caste system that's the question well uh, to my knowledge uh, the caste system is not been understood properly in the first place so that is the one thing but people actually hypothetically consider this verse as a caste system but uh, what krishna says as we all know is that it's actually our guna and our karma that actually decides as to what system we fall in and i was actually listening to a interview yesterday of one of our devotee <coughs> and he was asking like uh, you is con people uh, talk about everything everything but then you talk about sanatan dharma very nice thing he said you talk about sanatan dharma and then why would people follow sanatan dharma in the first place in india because you sanatan dharmi is have actually divided the people into all the caste system and then that was that devotee uh, he is a sanyasi so he actually happened to refer to this verse not only this verse he actually referred to the verse in shrimad bhagavatam as well that is in uh, first canto second chapter i don't know the verse number but that's there in that in that also krishna speaks about the same thing so what he what he said was very clear that first you don't know about the god you don't know about the religion you don't know the text also in the first place and you people like foolish idiots talk about caste system you don't know anything so i actually picked up the answer from there so that's all i can say um, i may be wrong but yeah that's no, no, you you you're perfectly right and you have given a reference so basically the caste system what is understood in the today's world is completely distorted version of what was originally created by krishna um, as you prabhu also mentioned mata ji also is guna karma vibhagashah is not birth vibhagashah is not janma vibhagashah so the son of a brahman may not be a brahman and the example material example we can take a lawyer son may not be necessarily a lawyer he may become lawyer if he qualifies all the exams a doctor son may not be a doctor so similarly brahman sons may not be a brahman um if you remember in bhagavatam um prathuma rishabdev rishabdev had 100 sons so we know out of 100 since only 10 became kshatriyas 81 became karmkandi brahmans and 9 became navyagendras we know that uh, 10 only 10 became kshatriyas so and the top one was obviously bharat maharaj so it's not necessary a kshatriya son has to be a kshatriya advaita acharya we know from uh, panchatattva his son actually became karmkandi brahmans some of them actually became uh, impersonals as well so it's not necessary even in a vedic culture we have examples of that and we can also remember the example of parashuram parashuram was born a brahman practically acted like a kshatriya vishwamitra born as a kshatriya later became a brahman even a guru of lord ram so um, these are very clear divisions in vedic culture based on guna and karma and as mataji was nicely explaining so something we have a skill or competence of doing that a doctor for example is very competent in his job but his integrity his character is missing huh? so um, both part has to be maintained when the both part is there then we can define someone of a particular varna and if he is not belonging to the varna what it is called in today's language or sort of bhagavad gita language varna sankar <laughs> so we can see in today's world most of us are varna sankar not varna sankar in the sense of a uh, sort of a low padi to someone but because we are all mixed up sometime we act as a brahman very um, in mode of goodness sometime we become like a shudra <laughs> we act in mode of ignorance we become disturbed in our mind agitated in our senses so we act um, as a shudra and as per bhagavad gita this is based on your actions is nothing to do with your birth huh? so the probability in a vedic culture was when the father is kshatriya son will become a kshatriya this was a probability 
but that probability was not always maintained. In today's world, it's definitely very, very different. So if someone blames a uh, caste system, uh, first answer is yes, it doesn't exist, what we understand. And second thing, Amog Lila Prabhu was explaining very nicely, even Chaitanya and Charan Prabhu, this actually exists in all the societies of all the world. Because every society, <coughs> sorry, I have some <laughs> cold in my throat. So every society, he said, even in a company, you will see there was some, someone would be an R&D intellectual class. Huh? They are very intellectual people. Some will be only project managers. We know in IT projects also, you know, some project, they just talk, talk, talk. <laughs> they're not good into coding, but they talk and they're very good into it. Huh? There will be some who are just assistants, always, all the time assistants. Uh, they will be doing assisting to other people like that. And some, some will be money-minded, mercantile class. Huh? This we can see even in the classroom, different students reflect different qualities. So this caste, so-called so-called caste system exists actually everywhere, but the names are given differently. Huh? In India, we call it Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra. In modern world, they can call it administrate, administrator class or mercantile class or uh, um, assistants, general assistant. Huh? So the names can be different, but the concept is exactly the same. So this verse is referring to that concept based on guna and karma, nothing to do with janma. So we can clearly defy those arguments very easily based on this verse. And finally, um, again, as Priya Mataji also repeated twice, Krishna is not responsible. He's saying, Tasse kartaram apimam. Karta means I am the doer. means I have created it. But vidhi akartaram apimam. But you should know me, Akarta, non-doer of that. Why? Because I'm not responsible. And, and she gave a nice example of government and jail. Government is creating the jail, but government is responsible for people going inside the jail. So Krishna has created the world, but he is not responsible for people entering into this jail of Durga. Um, Krishna is not responsible. We ourselves are responsible for that. Okay. So very nice okay. words, uh, very highly quoted words. So we should okay. understand. So I just had a uh, just a quick question. Yes, uh, when, I just didn't understand when you mentioned about the like I like you talked about the different um, ashramas, but for the Brahmachari ashram, could you just explain that one? Like you mentioned, okay. yeah, who always resides in Brahman. What do you mean? Yes. So one who is okay. So I think there are two questions here. So one is about Varna and one is about Ashrama. So as you only explained initially very nicely. So Varna is about our external needs, our psychological needs. Huh? So when we talk about Varna, it takes care of how we live in a most harmonious way to our nature in this world. Huh? And Ashrama is always referring to how we advance in the spiritual life. So one is Paradharma, one is Aparadharma. Paradharma refers to the lower dharma, lower dharma, which belongs to this body. We all are male, females, um, and we have a particular duty given by Krishna, and we are doing that. Huh? That's one part of our life. Another part of our life is we are all spirit souls. We are all eternally servant of Krishna. We're trying to revive that uh, consciousness within us. So that is relating with ashrama. Now, Mataji's question is practically about Brahmachari ashram. So, so Brahmachari ashram is the one person who is always living in Brahman. So what does always living in Brahman means? Basically, his whole existence is dedicated to understand Brahman and harmonize himself as much as possible completely as Brahman. Here, Brahman refers to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So whatever way Supreme Personality of Godhead has defined, he dedicates his complete energy, complete life to achieve that goal. Now, Grihastha, for example, Zabamachari Ashram, Grihastha Ashram, also Ashram. This is also for elevation. Grihastha Ashram is also, the purpose of Grihastha Ashram is to elevate. But the Grihastha will be working, say, outside, um, some eight to 10 hours of work they are doing. They will be involved some household duties, There'll be some tap leaking, some washing machine fixes, some car registration due and whatnot. And we have to get involved in all those uh, work as well. But what is the final goal of all this is to understand Krishna better and elevate ourselves while we are involved in all these duty up. But for a brahmachari, these things are not recommended. Brahmachari is just living a very simple life. We will have a small cupboard, maybe two or three dhotis, huh? a little brush. I saw a cupboard of a brahmachari. It's like literally he has practically no possessions, practically one, one gamcha, one uh, side bag. Um, Govincharan Prabhu, if anyone remembers, I'm not sure, very, very 
senior brahmachari in ascon and he was living in sydney for a while and uh, he traveled around the world with just one handbag on the side <laughs> he had one toothbrush one watch one dhoti and one sweater that said he traveled the whole world now you imagine a grahastha has to go for a world travel how many suitcases we have to carry uh, it will not be a handbag i'm, I'm sure about it a 7 kilo handbag is never enough it's just for the snacks and especially if you have young kids <laughs> it's very different it's very different but the purpose of both ashramas is exactly same brahmachari is dedicating his whole life but that's why brahmachari rules are quite different than the grahastha rules grahasthas are little lenient <laughs> the rules are little lenient but for a brahmachari prabha said um, not even a single second you should sit idle because as soon as you sit idle uh, your mind will go here and there you'll think about uh, women and money <laughs> Prabhu said that even girls are same thing in one sense. Right? If you are not involved in a nice Krishna conscious activity, our mind goes here and there. So um, the rules are different, but the purpose is exactly same. Is that okay, Madhuji? Yes, Prabhuji. But I, I was just still a bit unsure when you said Brahman. So are you saying that Brahmachari dedicating his life to Krishna in the form of Brahman mean like his no Krishna supreme personality of God it Krishna in in, in his um you know chatur in, in his personal form not his yes the... yes yes Mataji personal form yes okay. so Brahman words refers to different things um, at different places so Brahman can refer to a uh, Brahman Jyoti yeah Jyoti. that's what I was thinking ah uh, no here so real Brahmachari is referring to Krishna's personal form okay so. Uh, with the context the meaning changes so here brahman refers to supreme personality of god now on another uh, perspective this brahmachari can be a mayavadi brahmachari for example he belongs to a, a mayavadi sect he is also a brahmachari but then he will take brahman meaning here as <laughs> brahman effulgence of krishna but in our sampradaya we can say brahman refers to supreme personality of god in personal form okay thank you that's why many times uh, this sanskrit is little difficult to understand because based on the context the meaning changes so we have to take help of our acharyas even when we know some words in sanskrit and the meaning we should be careful in using it because our acharyas will know what's the correct meaning at that place okay uh mahas prabhu i want to ask you one question uh, when we talk about uh, brahman kshatriya shudra vaishya now where does a vaishnava stand then where does a vaishnava stand okay <laughs> very is it, is it part of it or beyond that because obviously there is a lot of for what is saying yeah. information to be known about it so yeah. can you please explain it's a it's a big 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 topic <laughs> uh, but we can just try to understand uh, literally vaishnava who is a vaishnava in one sense who is a who is a devotee of lord vishnu he is a vaishnava huh? now devotee of lord vishnu can be a brahman can be a kshatriya because as i said this our externals what we are earning our live livelihood from suppose you are doing a business um, as per shastra you are called a vaishya huh? and then the maharaj was doing agriculture farming so he is called a vaishya but a vaishnav can belong to any one of these category so called categories but he is a devotee of the lord so these categories does not impact him example comes from shri chaitanya mahaprabhu who says i'm neither a sanyasi nor a grahastha not a brahmachari not a vahanaprasthi i'm not a brahman i'm not a kshatriya i'm not a vaishya or shudra what i am my identification is i am the servant of the servant of the gopis huh? the lord of the gopis he said the lord of the gopis so uh, a vaishnava does not belong to any one of these category at the same time externally he can belong to any one of these categories but his real identification is as the servant of vishnu lord vishnu padma puran there's a verse i can't remember the verse but it says what's the definition of sura in asura sura is one who is obedient to lord vishnu they are called sura they are called devotees one who is disobedient to lord vishnu they are called asura very simple definition but very meaningful so these are all external characteristics now bakri sultan maharaj have given a whole seminar on this i'm sure you would have heard about it so there was a brahman versus vaishnava so i think first two days of the seminar bakri sultan maharaj practically ours and us was glorifying brahmans so the small brahmans were very happy yay bakri sultan maharaj is glorifying us based on janma basically he said huh? who is a brahman but third and fourth day of the seminar <laughs> he glorified vaishnavas much much higher than so called brahmanas huh? so vaishnav position is very very unique very deep and actually is on top of all this huh? vaishnav does not belong to any sort of one on ashram in that sense 
because he understands his real position. And Bhakti Sant Maharaj also explained uh, something called Devi Varnashram. Devi Varnashram is where a person who is living in Varnashram dedicate everything for Lord Krishna. Huh? Uh, what we are following today is called Asri Varnashram, the term given by Bhakti Sant Maharaj. So Asri Varnashram is Varnashram, which is defined based on Janma. Uh, which is what we are currently following. It's called Asuri Varnashram. It's Varnashram, but Asuri. But Bhakti Siddhant Maharaj recommended Daivi Varnashram. Daivi means where we, Daivi means divine. Yes, Daivi does not mean Devi. Divine Varnashram, which is divine Varnashram, where you connect all our Varna and all our Ashrama in every single activity for the pleasure of the Lord. That's where we sit in at the moment. At the, actually, I, I should say we are aspiring for that. Daivi Varnashram. That's where Prabhupada says, I've only done 50% of my work. 50% of work is still left. What was that work? To establish Daivi Varnashram all around the world. Huh? And many devotees, many Prabhupada disciples are really working on these things. Huh? Is that okay? Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Big subject matter. <laughs> but it's a nice question. Very nice question. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Let's move to the next one. This is a very important verse. So it's good to be spending some time on it. Let's move forward. Um, Matri Mataji, you were there last time. Would you like to do this? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Krishna. Yes, Prabhu, I was there. Yeah. So uh, in this word, uh, so Krishna is continuing. Uh, in the previous words, he said that Hare even... Hare Krishna, sorry. Maybe you can read the translation. Just gives us a good context. The translation is, there is no work that affects me, nor do I aspire for the fruits of action. One who understands this truth about me also does not become entangled in the fruitive reactions of work. So in the previous verse, uh, Krishna was saying like he is the creator, but again, he is not responsible. Uh, and it all depends on Jiva's um, uh, guna and karma. Uh, so the reactions also depend on their uh, doing. However, uh, and he continues to say uh, about his um, stand, saying that there is no work that affects him. Uh, no, that is what it means is like there is no loss or gain for any uh, work, uh, which he it impacts uh, Krishna himself. And uh, nor he has any desire uh, to uh, to feel to get his fulfilled. So those who understand this also do not entangle in the fruity uh, reactions. So what it means is like na ma me mine karmani. So no work limpanti is does not impact. So na me karma phales pruha. Nor I have any desire for uh, any karma. Iti maam yo bijanati. So those who understand this, iti is this one, maam who understands about his quality. Karma bhir na sa bhatyate. So uh, even those people do not get entangled into this, uh, in the karma, in the reactions. Thank you, Mataji. Um, one thing more, more we can explain here, which I think we discussed last time. So, Namam karmani limpanti. So karma is something which we do outside. And karmphal is praha, we have a desire inside. Simple inside. example, we all go to work for what purpose? To earn some livelihood. Huh? So we will get certain amount of money. That's why. So that's a ispraha, desire inside us. Huh? The desire inside prompts us to work outside. If there is no desire, will anyone work? <laughs> so there is a desire inside. And why we have a desire for work? Not that we want to work. I don't want to work. <laughs> but there are other things related to it by which we'll get karma fala, which we'll engage in another in other activities, right? So you start from here, for example, is praha, there's a desire. Huh? Karma fal. What is the karma fal, for example, in this activity? Money. Huh? Uh, so that's a karma fal. And because of that karma fal, we go out and work. Huh? But Krishna is saying, I don't have any desire for any karma fala. Why? Because Krishna is Atma Ram. He's Satya Sankalpa. Even if he desires something, for example, he doesn't, but even if he desires something, what happens? He's Satya Sankalpa. Whatever he does, Sankalpa. Sankalpa means just a thought. He doesn't have to do, yeah, wow, this and that. <laughs> he just desires and that things appear in front of him. He's Satya Sankalpa. Atma Ram means Atma Santushta. He's completely satisfied within himself. 
Now, can um, we can we say we are Atmaram? Anyone here? I am not. <laughs> the other one, Maharaj was saying we are uh, Dal Ram, Bhat Ram, Mani Ram. <laughs> we are not Atmaram, are we? We do not delight in our Atma. Huh? Hardly, <laughs> hardly when we are sitting in a very nice class of Kirtan for a moment. We can, we can feel, yeah, it's so nice, it's so nice. But as soon as you, that moment goes, you're again, um, chintaram. <laughs> so many chintas, so many anxieties are uh, haunting your mind, actually. Huh? So we are different rams, but we are not Atmaram. <laughs> Maybe after eating prashadam, we'll be Atmaram for one hour, <laughs> so-called. <laughs> I have given up the desire to eat. Today is Ekadashi. <laughs> But that also after eating, isn't it? <laughs> after eating, we all feel like, why did I eat <laughs> so much? <laughs> anyway, so, but Krishna actually doesn't have all this. Huh? So Krishna is giving his personal example. Why is he giving his personal example in this sense? He's saying, I neither have any desire for karma, nor, nor do I, even if I act, I don't get involved in that activity. What is the reason for giving his own example here, anyone? So he gives 413 and then he gives 414. So 413, he says, Chatur Rane I'm not the I'm, I'm the non-doer. That, that's fine. Then he gives his personal example. Why he's giving personal example? So first thing, go back to the verse 13. He's saying, I have done so much activity, right? Creating the material world, creating jivas, creating Brahma Ji, demigods, and engaging them into different affairs giving karma fun to all these, this is a big task. Eh? He's saying, I'm non-doer. But you can say, but he's non-doer. He's doing so much activity. And the, then he says, next one, namam karmani, this karma, this action which I'm doing does not impact me. And I don't have any like intense <laughs> desire in my heart to do all this. So he's making his stand very, very clear that I am out of, I'm neither responsible nor when I'm working. So not responsible Okay, someone is dying and um, you, you and, and finally he died, for example, this comes to my mind. You say, oh, doctor, you know, my, my um, beloved ones passed away because of you. And doctor is like, I'm not responsible for it, isn't it? I was just doing my job and he had certain disease and uh, he left his body. And you say, oh, you're responsible. Krishna said, I'm not responsible for it. And do you get involved? Because while operation, for example, doctor did a mistake and then the person left the body, for example. So Krishna is saying, all this is happening, happiness, distress of, of all these jivas in the material world. Namam karmani limpanti. I do not get entangled. Even if I'm doing it, I do not get entangled. Now, what is the message Krishna is giving here for Arjuna? What is Arjuna's desire? To get out of the battlefield and go in a jungle and beg like a sannyasi or be like a beggar, like a brahman. But Krishna is saying, even if I have done everything, I do not get involved in this activity. I'm not neither responsible, nor I get involved in the activity, nor I have any karmphala espraha, nor I have any desire for the karmphala. So similarly, iti maam yubi janati, one who knows me like that and works like that, what will happen? Karmvir sanabadyate. He will not get bound. So basically he's passing a message to Arjuna. Even if you're you understand me as transcendental I am, Janma Karma Chamendibhyam. Huh? So you understand me transcendentally. And he explains the whole thing. And say, even if you're involved, you're doing Chatur Varnam, you are one of the Varna you are involved in, you are doing in your duty. But if you know me like that, you also become transcendental. You also transcend from all those activities and karma falis praha. And kar, the activity, the, kar, the reaction of the karma will not bind you. Is it clear? The whole chain from 9 to 14, very clear. And this exists for all of us. So basically, Arjun, who was scared about getting the karmphala, is saying, actually, you will not get just by knowing me that I am the doer. I'm doing all this, but I do not get involved. I do not have any desire for this. And if you know me, you also become transcendental. Naiti Mameti Sarjun, you come back to me, basically. Huh? So this, all these verses are uh, very beautifully related with each other. He's saying, if you know me like this, you will not get bound. So Arjun, you should do your duty and fight. Do not worry about uh, this karmphal and, and karma. The karma is a very heinous karma. Killing someone is a very heinous karma. Then the reaction, what comes, that is also very heinous. But in this situation, Arjun's platform, as per Krishna's expectation, should be completely different. If you look at from the, that platform, if you act on that platform, then karmvir nasabandhyate. You will not be bound by the karma or the phala. Is it clear? Okay, let's move to the next one. 4.15. Um, 
Rasanand Prabhu and Mataji, you were here last class. Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Okay. For 15. Translation. All the liberated souls in the ancient times acted with this understanding of my transcendental nature. Therefore, you should perform your duty following in the footsteps. So as you said, it's just continuing from the previous verse. Like here, Krishna is talking about the performance or the karma, whatever you are being performed, kritam, karma. It should be based on knowing about Krishna. So like that, the past, the purvi, that in the past, in the previous predecessors, so they were, they attained the liberation, mumukshubi. So they attained liberation by uh, understanding this way about the transcendental nature of Krishna. So now he is saying that you should also perform your duty following the footstep on the similar way. That Kuru perform karmava, do your prescribed duty in Tasmat Maam Puruva, like in like the previous predecessor in the ancient times, how they did. So you for you perform in the same way. So this is what about this verse. But he also highlighted that, uh, you know, this is the conclusion of the section you now actually from the previous chapter, like 3.36, where Arjuna was asking uh, why something is forcing me to do these things. And where Krishna has said that is because all the costs, something which is forcing you to do is uh, all the bad things is based on the lust. So how one has to overcome the lust. So there he explains how we have to get in the transcendental knowledge. And uh, that's how it's coming back. So Krishna, in details, he explains from uh, 3.3, 3, 37 3, onwards, yeah. 3637 3, onwards, like the, uh, how the lust and how to overcome. And then he's talking about the transcendental nature. And there he highlights that why he appears, when he appears. And um, how is the, now we talked about the purification process of getting into the Varnashra Dharma and how you can purify. Now he's getting back into the section where he left in 3.35, back into the Karma Yoga section. Now that's going to be discussed from 15 to 64, understanding Karma as a platform of Jnana. So, Thank you, yeah, very nice. So basically in 4.15, um, as Prabhuji explained, so Krishna has just given some examples. He has given the similar things in 3.20 as well. Asita Janak Adiyaha. Janak Adi uh, kings, they have followed the principle and they have done their duty. He had done the same thing in 4.10 as well. So he keeps giving the principle and keeps giving the example. That's like an assurance to Arjun. Not only that I'm giving you some um, principle, um, I'm just remembering Mohit Prabhu. Huh? So Mohit Prabhu, you know, he, he works for a bank, so he may offer you some sort of loan. And then you say, you know, um, is anyone else have received the loan and has paid off the mortgage, you know, done all these work? So he can give, oh, we have testimonials of these, these, these clients, you know, they've successfully taken a business loan and their business was successful and, you know, bank shot, you know. So, so, so we give a principle and then we give an example. So that example was like an assurance for us. Huh? It's not, I'm the first one, you go to a, uh, you have some problem in your brain and you go to a surgeon. Can you do my brain surgery? Yes, yes, I can do um, your brain surgery. So you'll ask a, a natural question to the doctor. Have you ever done a brain surgery before? So he will say, you are going to get the, this honors for the first time. <laughs> so you would be my first patient. What will, what will be your response? Thank you very much. <laughs> Don't try me out. Uh, I'm looking at Vijay Gopi Mataji smiling. Huh? If your son is not experienced, will people trust? Will you trust? <laughs> By not me, don't write on me. <laughs> Even sometime, you know, some uh, devotees cook some some bhoga item and then offer to Krishna and say, please come to my home and I'll try it on you. <laughs> he say, okay, have you tried it on other persons? <laughs> so similarly, so Krishna gives this assurance. So I am not just giving a principle. Many ancestors have done this and have achieved the result. What is the result? Mukshabi, Prabhupada translates as, uh, who attained the liberation. So they followed the same thing. So now if you follow in their footsteps, what will happen to you? You'll also achieve the same destination. Huh? So Krishna is giving this very nice assurance. Huh? So principle, examples, giving assurance to Arjuna. Thank you, Prabhu.
And now we are entering those different sections, as Prabhuji says, so 16 to 24, we are back. So Krishna went a little bit detour from 336 onwards because there's a question of Arjun 336. So Krishna explained very nicely about the lust. And then he entered himself into this fourth chapter about transcendental knowledge because um, in the 338, I think he says, Gyani no nityavarinaha. So we are all Gyanis by nature. All the souls are Gyani, fully aware of our position, Krishna's position, what's our duty. But our Gyan gets avratam Gyan metena, Gyani no nityavarinaha. So avratam, it gets covered by the lust. So Krishna is saying, by the transcendental knowledge, you uncover it. Huh? Now we are coming back to the same section here, Karma Yoga which uh, is after explaining his transcendental position, Krishna analyzes action and describes how to perform activities on the transcendental plane. So we continue the same topic in terms of transcendental knowledge. So 416, which we have already done. Uh, Mataji, would you like to do that? Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Even the intelligence are bewildered in determining what is action and what is inaction. Now I shall explain to you what action is, knowing which you shall be liberated from all misfortune. So here, um, as you said, Krishna has just gone for a detour and then he has come back in this verse to explain about the Karma Yoga. Um, so here he says, um, Kavya bi atra mohitaha. Kavya is like, uh, Kavi is the intelligent person. Even the intelligent persons are bewildered by what? By, by knowing what is karma and what is akarma. Kim karma, akim akarmeti. What is karma and what is akarma? Mm -hmm. So uh, mohit uh, is a word which says it's bewildered. And uh, in the second line, tatte karma parikshami. So now I will explain it to you. Janatva Mokshaya Shubhat. So by explaining it to me, you will get debilated from all misfortunes, which is Ashuba. Ashuba is misfortune or the ill fortune. So you will be liberated if I explain it to you what action is. So here uh, you explain that uh, uh, the inauspicious is like, uh, as per Arjuna in this context, the inauspiciousness is killing others is inauspicious. But by uh, following Krishna's order, then the inauspicious will also become auspicious. But uh, you also explained that being in this material world itself, it's inauspicious. Uh, so uh, by here yeah, Krishna is saying to Arjuna that I will explain it to you what action is, so that by understanding this, you can get liberated of all misfortunes. Thank you, Mataji. So basically, Kim Karm, Kim Akarmeti. So why Krishna is putting this concept here? Because many times people understand Inaction, it, inactivity as inaction. Inactivity means if I'm just sitting on the couch, not doing anything, they think like that. That's not true. Though, if I'm not doing any activity, this is inaction. And that is better. When I'm doing an activity, the activity is binding. But Krishna is saying, actually, that's not a true definition. That's not a true definition. Karma means activity can be a inaction, can be a karma. And a karma, not doing any activity, can be a karma. How? So if you're sitting on a couch and doing nothing, but still your mind is constantly thinking, you may be thinking about your neighbor, how bad he is and what happened in my life and this and that, you may be in anxiety for your future. You are still breathing. You are killing viruses and bacteria. Um, your mind is working. So, so many things you are doing, although externally you're not doing any activity, but you're still doing activity. And activity, if you do for the sake of Krishna, and the Prabhupada gave a simple example of a, a soldier going to the battlefield and killing the enemies, if he kills more enemies, when he comes back home, what he gets? Bharat Ratna. <laughs> he gets an award huh? or, or some, some other medal he gets. Huh? But the same soldier, when he's on holidays, he goes home in his village and, and his neighbor shouts at him and he slaps him. <laughs> what happens? He gets karma. Huh? Because that slapping or that punishment, is small, even a small punishment, he's acting on his behalf. He got angry and he attacked on his on his neighbor, for example. Then he get punished by the law. But the same soldier, when he goes on the battlefield on the border and he kills, you know, 50 of the enemy soldiers, he gets an award. So what's the difference? Because that action, a, a so-called heinous action, was done on the account of his saving his country. Huh? So that goes on the king's account, basically. So he doesn't get any action, rather he gets uh, rewarded by that. But the same person on his account, when he do even a small part of that action, he gets punished by the law. 
So we have to really understand what's the definition of karma and a karma. This is not all as simple as it looks like. So saying Kavya Paitra Mohita. Kavya means intelligent people also get bewildered. Now, our Mohit Prabhu is not here. He also is bewilderingly attractive. <laughs> he does bewilder by his uh, extreme amount of nice services and by his nice nature. And Krishna accepts that here. Huh? It's very nice. So, Kim Karm, Kim Akarmeti. So, let's explore more of this terminology. Krishna will explain what does these term means. 17, same thoughts here as well. Um, who would like to do last week? Who was here? Um, Jai Prakash Prabhuji, Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu, sorry, I'm traveling back Prabhu. Uh, I no, problem. Sorry. no problem Prabhu, it's all right, it's all right. Um, I think I have to go back. Vinay Prabhu, you were there last time? I can't remember. Yes, Prabhu, I was there, but I'm oh. driving, you can see, it's 17. 17 Prabhu Ji. Okay. The interstices of action are very hard to understand. Therefore, one should know properly what action is, what forbidden action is, and what inaction is. So, he said, so, who is doing like action? And uh, there is a word of Buddhabhan, it should be understood. Yes. So if, if you understand what kind of karma we are doing, then it, it, it will be uh, uh, re referred to the another one is uh, So is this is also also be the uh, for the forbidden work. So <clears throat> in 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 here say the Krishna says if somebody is uh, understand this was what is the action and in inaction and uh, then the, the they don't don't have that uh, the material uh, bondage you know so uh, and and is is uh, previously we see that if if somebody understand their um, like uh, he's doing like uh, something for Krishna and it will be straight uh, going to transcendental and he no need to do anything like a uh, reaction. Uh, so that's why we, we just uh, can remember I suppose. Okay, thank you. Yeah. You explained actually more than uh, what was given, but it's very nice. You are re-emphasizing the, the point which Krishna is making here. So Krishna is saying, Karmano Piyapi Bodhabhyam. So this word Bodhabhyam is used three times in this verse. You can say Bodhabhyam. Bodhavyam, Bodhavyam, three times. What is Bodhavyam? Prabhupada should be understood. So it's a very simple verse in that terms so of should be understood. What should be understood? Karmana. One word is Karmana. Second, Krishna is saying be Karmana. Now, in the so far in Bhagavad Gita, he has not used the word be Karmana, right? He is introducing this word here, be Karmana. And the third, he is using a Karmana. So basically, there are three terms Karma, a Karma, and be Karma. Bodhavyam, you should understand it. Why? Because Gahana Karmano Gati. So this line gets referenced so many times. So here Gati refers to the destination. Uh, what's that verse? Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Eva Kevalam, Kalao Naste, Naste, Gatir Anitha. Gati here refers to not speed, as we sometimes call in Hindi. What's your Gati? 40 kilometers sometimes. People are slow Gati, sometimes fast Gati. But here Gati refers to destination. What does destination refers to here? The destination of the the karma or a karma or vikarma is very, very hard to understand. Very Bishop Patama in Mahabharat also says that when he's lying on the bed of arrows, he's instructing the district Maharaj. So Gana Karma Nagati is very, very hard to understand what has given result to this particular action. Here I, I mean action as a reaction, uh, which we are facing. Um, I, I had an example. If someone is blind in this birth, we cannot uh, practically say what actions he had performed in the previous life, which has resulted him um, being a blind person in this life. Very hard to say. He has done you know, 100 bad karma that equivalent to this uh, blindness, for example. He had done one big, huge karma, which has resulted this, or multiple lifetimes, multiple actions, reactions as fructify as him being blind. 
One example is very hard to understand. That Rashtra losing his hunters and Krishna taking him back to 50 lifetimes. And you're a hunter and you killed 100 uh, birdlets and you watch them. So now you have to watch um, your hundred cents dying. So the Thra says, okay, that's all right, but uh, why I took 50 lifetimes to, to get the reaction? And what was the answer of Krishna? You took, you did not have enough piety in that birth of hunter to get hundred cents. Each son we get, there's a particular piety needed to get each son or any progeny we get. We need certain type, you want to buy a, a little pen or something, you need to pay some money, isn't it? <laughs> if you buy an expensive pen, you have to pay more money. If you don't have money in your account, how can you buy the expensive pen? So a progeny costs us some karma, huh? a good karma, obviously. So um, to get 100 sons, and they were strong, they were well built, <laughs> to get 100 sons like that, it, it, it needs some karma. So for 50 lifetimes, you are accumulating the good karma to lose it after 51 janma. <laughs> That's amazing, huh? That's amazing, huh? So you achieve, 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 achieve just to lose. Huh? So Krishna brings you, I should rather say, material nature brings you to a point where you're able to do so many nonsense activities and then you fall down. In Hindi, they call it Paap ka ghada bhi bhara nahi hai, huh? uh, the, the picture of sin is not filled as yet. Some people say, why Raman is able to do so many bad activities, Renakashapu and blah, blah, blah. Because they had the pious account with them as well. So that piety and impiety both going together, but when impiety comes to a stage where you know you can't take anymore, then it falls apart. Then it falls apart. So it says Gahana Karmanogati. Okay, so three terms are given here. The explanation is not yet given. So let's see verse 418, where it will be explained. This is a very nice verse, 418. Um, who would like to do that? I'm running out of people who were present in the last class. <laughs> I'll probably go back. Um, to the Sumitra so, so wasn't there. Okay, uh, maybe Vijay Gopi Mataji Rasanand Prabhu, you can uh, do one one. Yes, Prabhu, thank you. So, for it to <clears throat> translation, one who sees inaction in action and action in inaction is intelligent among men, and he is in the transcendental position, although engaged in all sort of activities. So we are starting with the buddhiman. So who is an intelligent person? Your Krishna is describing about an intelligent person. He is the one who sees inaction in action and action in inaction. So that is an intelligent person, though Krishna refers to your karma, akarma, and also vikarma. So there are, you also mentioned about the four meanings for karma, like you highlighted that karma means action, then karma means the reaction, uh, what action you have done, please. Sometimes we say, because of our karma, my situation is like this. And the other action is the cycle of karma, so how the law of karma influences on each person. And generally, karma means doing some pious activities. So based on what is the Shastric reason, some pious activity, we build up karma. That's the how the four definitions or meanings of karma is. <clears throat> so then, uh, then vikarma is the one which is related to not doing prescribed duty, whatever the Shastra prohibited. So if you are doing that, that's called vikarma. And akarma is sometimes referred to as no action or no activity, uh, but really is the activity that actually doesn't produce any material reactions. That's uh, actually a karma. In general, uh, Krishna conscious term, we talk about all devotional service are meant to be a karma. So activity will be the same. Sometimes the basically it's the consciousness behind the activity that which uh, determines whether it's an, uh, a karma or an akarma activity. Maybe the activity may be same, so, but how how is our consciousness, how we are doing that? Like you gave the example of book distribution and stuff like that. So if we are doing book distribution, it's not just for I mean, earning our living out of it, but with the consciousness of spreading consciousness. So, and the other example would be, we may also even think of buying a ticket and going to Vrindavan, but we may not be in the right consciousness of being in a Vrindavan. We may do a lot of offense over there, but then that's that's 
that's we can think of whether it becomes a karma for you or really it's becoming a karma because it's a devotion okay so here uh, also krishna says although you do, do action in battlefield according to my instruction so the inner meaning of this verse is if you are doing action in this battlefield i ask my my interaction actually you will not getting any type of reaction so krishna here refers to everything krishna karma krit although engaged in all activities purely done for the pleasure of lord so that is called a karma Uh, but the most I have to do on this. So basically, defining um, uh, akarma, karma, akarma, and uh, how a person sees uh, inaction in action and action in inaction. He comes into a transcendental position, even though he does all type of activities. He is put he is above the modes and doing in a transcendental position. Thank you. 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 like how the path finds uh, mother. its mother even though there is thousand of uh, uh, cows there the path finds it. similarly even the karma also finds um, its reaction so it will find us somewhere or the other so we we will get the reaction and also you said that uh, there should be a lot of faith uh, in krishna then so we won't complain any of his plans like if any of our karma is not working we won't blame krishna like uh you know we should accept krishna's plan when we have strong faith in krishna yeah like my very nice staff example yeah so if something coming back to us we should understand this our own calf it has found us eventually huh it took a while maybe few birds we don't know but it has found us so we should accept it devotees accept not everything but at the same time you know generally we accept somewhere uh, or other it's maybe our karma or it may be krishna's arrangement for our purification chatran charan prabhu was saying in class i just remembered when you were saying about the calf he said uh, we usually plan our we usually plan our future based on our present so we know the present and we plan the future so today we have you know 100 dollars we want to earn to say 1000 dollars we plan how can we make from 100 to 1000 but krishna knows the future and he plans the present it's very nice huh? it's very nice so many times you know mother or father is saying children oh, you should study you should do this and you should not do this because they know by studying by working hard by inculcating good habits my child will become a very good boy or girl in the future but children <laughs> they are constantly very playful mood huh i want to play i want to eat chocolate and whatever you prohibit they want to do that more and more more and more huh more screen time more eating some you know chips and all that so because parents know that the future of the child is in child's hand so similarly our supreme father krishna he knows you know our millions of future births already and he is planning our present so based on our you know future births he is he is planning it so we should cooperate with him not become very impatient uh, in his plans vyasadev when he just was crying in the battlefield after the death of abhimanyu vyasadev appeared in the battlefield it says in mahabharat and he was consoling with his maharaj and he said uh, why are you crying he said he just said because of me abhimanyu died i should have gone forward but i sent abhimanyu so abhimanyu died because of me so vyas they have said actually you should not um, you should not be agitated for who has gone because he has gone back to godhead huh? you should be agitated you should be lament you should not be lamenting for those who have already gone you should be lamenting about those who are present at the moment suppose you are journeying from here to india huh? and halfway of the journey you know you miss your flight from singapore for example huh? and someone else who could catch the flight and they reach india on time will you be lamenting are why they have reached not here yeah, you may be envious <laughs> you may be envious that why they reached and not me but will you be lamenting on them that was our destination they reached to vrindavan huh? you will be actually happy about them oh thank you krishna my brother has reached not me whatever so you should not be lamenting so one who has reached to to the to the transcendental realm vyasthe have said you should not be lamenting about them you should be lamenting about those who are still here so that what vyasthe was saying you should be lamenting about yourself not about one who has gone and he said one more thing you should not try to scrutinize krishna's plan in due course of time you will know everything 
So mm. sometimes when you're trying to over scrutinize Krishna's plan, why this, why this, why that, why me and this and that, we just have so many questions for Krishna. Huh? So we are trying to over scrutinize. Little scrutiny is okay. We are all humans. We have emotions, but not over scrutinize. Just do your duty as per the instruction of your spiritual master. And what happens with that is a special master's duty. I heard one Radhesham Prabhu's lecture very nicely, and when someone was asking Prabhuji, how will you reach back to God at this and that, you know, all those uh, esoteric questions, and Prabhu said, very simple answer. I love it. He said, all you have to worry, you don't have to worry about going back to Godhead, this life, next life, this. all you have to worry about one thing. What is that? To please your spiritual master. That's all. You don't have to worry about when you will reach, how you will reach, this will happen, that will happen. All you have to worry about one simple principle, one motto of your life is to please your spiritual master. If your spiritual master is pleased, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Huh? So we often forget this principle, actually. We start thinking big, big project, this, that. But what our spiritual master have instructed, are we following his instruction? That's the only bottom line. If that is to go and, you know, build uh, uh, Prapa Samadhi, build buildings for Krishna, just do that. Building building buildings for Krishna will make you go back to Godhead. Yeah? You don't have to work. One time, Radhanath Maharaj very nicely said, uh, there was some, some, they were making a new temple or something in, in Mumbai. So some devotees will come for the class and they will stay for the whole class. But another devotees were responsible in building. They have to leave pretty early. So they were pretty sad and said, Maharaj, I can't even hear your classes. So Maharaj said in the class for those devotees who had to leave early to go and attend the construction site, he said, by going there and attending the construction work for Krishna, you are being fully Krishna conscious. Maharaj said that, Radha Maharaj. So not just by attending the Bhagavad class only, you are being Krishna conscious. Maybe in Bhagavatam class, you are having so many anxieties. <laughs> you are thinking about so many anarthas. But Maharaj said, no, that is your duty. You go there, <laughs> you have to leave Bhagavatam class and, and, and you attend that construction work for Krishna. They're building some temple. So that is fully Krishna conscious activity. So Kavya uh, Petra Mohitra, we all get bewildered by these activities. When we are in temple, oh, it's so nice, so nice. When we are outside, doing some shopping. Oh, that is a, a karma. Uh, Prabhupada said, for a spiritualist person, there is no material activity. Everything is spiritual. You're buying uh, vegetables, that's for Krishna. You're buying uh, cement, that's for Krishna. So every single activity is spiritualized. I know it's an ideal position, but the definition is every single activity can be spiritualized for the pleasure of the Lord. And then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where we are and how uh, we are externally situated. Our mind is in Krishna. Krishna says, my mind is Vrindavan. That's a, a consciousness which we have to get in our mind, not just reaching to the land Vrindavan. Land Vrindavan is also very nice, but our mind has to become Vrindavan. The consciousness has to become Vrindavan. Then you can live in Vrindavan all the time. Once he was uh, in Sydney, he's talking to some aspiring disciple, and he, he asked, jokingly, he asked, so... Uh, this, this mother you came from another country actually um, anyway so he said uh, where are you right now and she said i'm in sydney so where i am right now <laughs> and she said mara you're also in sydney he said i'm not in sydney i'm not in sydney i'm in rindavan i'm in rindavan i live in rindavan <laughs> he was jokingly saying i was just sitting and hearing it is so nice actually he is living in rindavan he may be bodily wise in sydney but he's living in rindavan so that's a consciousness okay so, so although you're engaged in all the activities, but you are seeing inaction in action. A lot of action you're doing in life, actually they're all inaction. It does not produce any reaction, but emotional activities. And action in inaction, you're sleeping in house and I'm not doing any action, but that's action actually, you're generating karma. You are in tamagun, you're in mode of ignorance. You're not probably attending your prescribed duties. You get karma out of that. You're not looking after your family well or whatever it may be. Let's move forward. Yeah, yes, Mataji. I just wanted to add one point, Prabhu. Also, Guru Maharaj says, like, don't blame the instrument for your own karma. Yes. So that also, like, it's a very catching point. We always say, oh, because of them, I've got uh, this, you know, problem. But uh, it's there that just uh, instruments to bring our own karma back to us. Yeah. So, and 
And okay. I think in the same uh, section, I heard an example, just further elaborating the same point. A postman delivers you uh, a punishment, for example. Postman is not responsible for that letter of punishment. Postman just gave you the letter. You are responsible for the activity and judge, in this case, Paramatma has decided to punish you in certain way. We can't blame. This is just a deliverer of your own karma. So that's where we can be a little peaceful. Again, we are humans. It's difficult, but... Uh, by philosophy, we can live my life much lighter, much, much lighter. And when we are in, you know, higher, higher realms, then actually these uh, externals will not impact us at all, at all. So philosophy helps so much. That's why the study of Shastra, um, someone was saying, sustains our devotion. Initiating devotion is very easy. Going to temple is a devotional activity. Going down to Krishna taking prashadam, having darshan, returning art. It's all devotional activity. But sustaining devotion for long term, that's a difficult task. And how does that come? Sustenance comes from Shastra. So we have to listen Shastra, follow Shastra. One who are following, watch them, like many monks and, and sannyasis. When we watch them, we get so much inspiration. Because this is what is uh, the, the food for our sustenance of devotion. We'll read in 7.28, uh, means determined vrata, huh? We're all um, so-called devotees, but we are not dradvrata. We're not so determined as yet. Huh? But we are aspiring to be a determined devotee. Okay, 419. Um, Prabhuji, uh, Mahathir, would you like One is understood to be in full knowledge, whose ever endeavor is devoid of desire for sense gratification. He is said by sages to be a worker for whom the reactions of work have been burnt up by the fire of perfect knowledge. Uh, so here the karma word is the desire for the personal sense gratification and uh, sankalpa is like uh, uh, your determination and uh, sambaramba it's like the attempts to and uh, aram is in, to initiate something yes <laughs> And uh, prema is like a desire for Krishna's sense gratification. It should not be our oh, uh, to fulfill our own uh, sense gratification. We have to desire. The prema should be to fulfill the desire of Krishna's sense, or uh, to please Krishna. And uh, so here you gave an example like once how Yudhishthira Maharaj. He was asking like uh, Krishna that I want more money and uh, position. Krishna was really stunned to hear from Yudhishthira, how come you are asking for the position and money? Then uh, Yudhishthira said, no, Krishna, I just really wanted to prove the world that Krishna's devotees are the best. That is the reason why I am asking. So he's not asking that position or money for his own sense gratification, but he just wants to prove the world Krishna devotees are the best. Uh, so that uh, example, Idea Prabhu, and uh, uh, actually, whatever we are doing, it's not the action that matters, the intention that matters a lot. Yep. So, uh, like, whether we are doing it our own sense gratification or we are pleasing the guru and the devotees, you know, that should be our motive of doing any actions. Thank you. Um, so basically, you can just take one key word here, Kam Sankalpa Varjitaha. So any activity which we perform, if you're performing for a personal sense gratification, we get the reaction back. But if that's for Krishna, no personal sense gratification involved, at least in intention, um, then actually that activity will burn. All the karma and the karma phala will be burned to ashes huh? because we, our intention is very nice. Okay. Also, do... you mentioned about karma is like the seed, uh, refers to the seed of the karma, the bija. You gave an example about the sprouts. Like the sprout, if you just put it in the water and soak for a couple of days, it just comes up. But if you fry it and then put it, it doesn't come up. So just, yeah. uh, that's how our... Yeah. 
So this is like desire. Yeah. We are devoid of sense gratification goes away. Thank you. It's a very nice example, actually. Uh, I forgot, but thank you for reminding me. Uh, so this example is given actually in Padma Puran. So Padma Puran says, what bhakti does, bhakti flies out the seed of uh, our desires. Huh? So we have so many desires in our heart. Huh? We want to do this, we want to gain this, and we want to go here and go there. All these things. First, it starts from desire, thoughts. And then you perform a particular action to fulfill those desires. But if the, desire, the seed of the desire is burnt, by devotional process, then you don't have any more desires to enjoy in this material world. Huh? We'll see more of it in 434. Okay, second last verse. Uh, Madhuri Mataji, I'll come back to you because I think you're also there in the last class. Okay, maybe she is not uh, present. That's all right. Priya Mataji, would you like to do that? Priya Mataji, sorry, you're on mute, I guess. Uh, yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Um, Hare Krishna. This one, Prabhuji, I was not there, so I will. Okay, no worries. Um, anyone else who was there? I can't remember any individuals. Okay, I'll do it. That's okay. So, Tyakto Akarm Phala Sangam. So, this is again giving the characteristic, similar point, re emphasized what Krishna is saying. Tyaktva, give up. What you have to give up. Not the karma, not the action. Krishna is never recommending giving up the action. What is giving up? Karma sangha, attachment to the karma. This is my money because uh, I have earned so hard. You know, I've made a house and I am the owner. So I have to enjoy this and that. So tektva, you give up that. And when you give up that, what you live with? Nitya, always. Trapto, you're always satisfied. Nir ashrayaha. So what does ashray refers to? Taking shelter. Nir ashray. You don't take any shelter. Now here, don't take any shelter does not refer to you live on the street. That means mentally you don't <coughs> think that this person or this position will give me a big ashray. If I become a minister, for example, you know, I'll be so well situated. <laughs> if I get this in the world, I'll be so well situated. No, nir ashrayaha. So Prabhupada writes, uh, you don't have to give up all the possessions, but you have to give up what? Possessive mentality. You can possess 100 things. That's no problem at all. But you need to give up the possessive mentality. Karmani abhi pravatopi. If with that mentality, you are abhi pravatopi, you are super engaged. Never kinchit karoti sa. Even you will not get any reaction. Huh? So similar thoughts are flowing in these verses. Now the last verse. Kirvisham mean anyone remembers from another verse of Bhagavad Gita, famous one? Rupam Prabhu is saying something in, on mute. Simple, Prabhu. Simple, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Which verse is there? Anyone? Or maybe you? 313. Paap, sin. Huh? So Kurvan na apnoti. Apnoti refers to achieving. Na apnoti, not achieving. What you will not achieve? Kilbisha, sin. You will not achieve sin. How you will not achieve sin? Nirashir, huh? without the desire for the result. Huh? Yet the chitta, the chitta, the consciousness is not into the result. Tyakta asar parigraha, again, giving up the possessive mentality. And how you are working? Shariram kevalam karma. So what are you doing? Just to maintain body, you have to do some karma. Huh? You have a family, your body or your family's bodies, you have to maintain the family, which is perfectly fine. You got to do some karma. Don't overdo it. In uh, NOI, we'll read Atyahara Prayasa Shaprijal Poniyama Graha. So Atyahara Prayasa, so the second word prayas refers to over endeavoring for mundane achievements. Huh? So endeavor is perfectly valid. Huh? But over endeavoring, I have to have 10 houses in next seven years. <laughs> You, you see all those Google ads, <laughs> you can be a whatever property millionaire within something. I have 17 properties, this and that. <laughs> this is called over endeavor. Huh? You will see in Bhagavad Gita um, a verse coming soon. Anyway, we'll explain when we come there. So here, just to maintain body and soul together, you have to do some work. Prabhupada says six to eight hours of work, not more, not more. Huh? Sometimes uh, some projects may demand a lot of work, but that time you do extra work, but then you have to come back to your normal lifestyle. If constantly you are working 12 hours every day, you might have to change your job. Contact Rupam Prabhu. <laughs> he has lots of it. 
<laughs> he knows lots of ways eh? and it's nice you know devotees helping each other the point here is constantly you should not be over engaged you have no time for krishna no time for chanting no time for reading no time for going to temple doing doing seva no time for bhagavatam means when will you get time my guru Maharaj says if you have no time all the time then there's a time to make time now it's a time to make time so now you sit and think how can i make time in my life for my eternal destination we're always busy always busy we're always busy all always busy when will we get it Guru Maharaj says you're squeezing your rounds here and there you're reading on the bus and train okay you know <laughs> But you have to just make time for these activity. These are our actual activity. You have no time for this. Huh? You're always squeezing some rounds in a car, some, some rounds in Westfield, some rounds in school after drop and pick up and all those things. Huh? You said, this is now it's a time to make a time. Huh? And make time. When will you make time for these activities? So it's, it's something to think about. No one else can instruct you on this matter. Everyone has to create time. Uh, exclusive time for Krishna, exclusive time, huh? not just squeeze up time, squeeze up time. You're doing a quick aarti. <laughs> okay, one day, two day, every day quick aarti. <laughs> Someday you can make quick aarti, someday relax, good aarti. Sometime quick bhoga, sometime a good bhoga, sometime no decoration or maybe practically very little. Sometime you should spend some time with the deities. You should, why not? They are the deities, they are waiting for us. Um, in lecture I heard the deities are achal, they cannot move. That's a deity form. Krishna can do anything, but a deity form is usually achal, it's immovable. So actually they depend on the householder to give them food, water, some nice clothes, some entertainment huh? for the deities. The deities entertainment, maybe some bhajans. Huh? So they're sitting on the altar waiting for us to please come and talk to me, spend some time with me, give me some water, give me some fruits. To your kid, you keep giving so many extra things throughout the day. With the deities, we do say one offering in a day, Eli Chidana <laughs> in India, many houses, and that's it. Khatam, finish. What? <laughs> and you see the spider web is going on around the altar. That's not the way we treat our boy or girl. Huh? So why Laddu Gopal or, or Gornitai? Why? So um, Shariram Kevlam is a very, very nice verse. So for the body, we spend so much time. So Krishna is saying, you spend reasonable amount of time for the body. Rest of the time should be given for the higher purposes. Yes, Tanya Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, uh, it's not directly relevant to the verse, but it's relevant to what you just said. Uh, regarding bhoga, sometimes when I'm cooking something, that's my favorite dish, the time that it's, it's the bhoga is offered to Krishna is very short as opposed to something that I don't, yes. <laughs> don't really like. But what's what's the what's the appropriate amount of time that you should offer this to the Lord? Okay, so uh, Mataji, uh, a simple answer is if your friend comes to your house, uh, your sister or brother or friend, how long they will take to eat a, a, a good plate of prashad? I mean, you know, maybe three, four rotis and some sabji and dal, roughly. So the time defined is around 10 minutes. So we should leave Bhoga with Krishna around at least 10 minutes. It can be 8 minutes, it can be 11, 12 minutes, you know, depending on the situation. But roughly you give a time and the quantity as we give it to an adult. In the temple, you see, they make a very nice plate. In India, at least I can go for myself in my house. So the plates were made, but a small katori, sabji in a very small katori. Oh, that's for Krishna. For us, is a big katori. <laughs> I'm like, uh, when I came here, I was doing that in India, I was also offering, but in a very small, small uh, bowls, uh, they were offering very small one paneer in one katori, you know. <laughs> Why? When your friend comes, uh, you give him uh, extra sabji or extra roti or extra sweet. Why not to Krishna? Huh? I, I saw Prem Sagar Prabhu in the kitchen and maybe most of you have seen. He, he makes a Jagannath plate. It's filled like a Govardhan Parvat. <laughs> Big pile of rice. And like, wow, practically one person can't have it. But obviously Jagannath can have it. So give very good quantity. Good, give good time. And also when you give, if, again, I'm taking a simple example of your friend. If your friend comes to your house, will you serve him the plate or her the plate? And then you go out somewhere doing other activities? No, you'll sit with him. Oh, please uh, take one more chapati. Did you like the sabji? You can talk. You can talk. No problem. Huh? Did you like the sabji? Do you, do you want extra salt? Or maybe a green chili? <laughs> Something. Treat the deity as a person. Now, it may not be possible on a daily basis in our 
hectic lifestyle. But if we understand the principle, we will follow, we will follow. So sit with them, sing a bhajan of a, of a great devotee, for example. And then if we're doing that activity, we come closer to the deity, we get more purification of the same activity. So you're offering bhoga, and then you go out and you know have a some other work done. I will not say what work, but you know, many times. Pujaris, uh, some sannyasi was saying, Pujaris, when offering bhoga in the temple, they come out and they talk. Maharaj was saying, actually, it's very wrong. A Pujari's duty when Krishna is eating to be there and attend Krishna's needs. They, they put the plate and for next 10 minutes, they come out and they have a chit chat, they go back. We should not do that. Now, it's not a principle just for the Pujaris in the temple, it's for us as well. We are also Pujari for our deities at home. So uh, when Krishna is accepting, you be with Krishna. You attend to Krishna's needs. He may need extra salt. He may need extra chapati, extra sabji. Uh, sabji may be very hot. <laughs> Make sure do not put over hot things in the plate of Krishna and then pick it up in after four minutes. Can you eat? No, you can't. How can Krishna eat? He's a little baby. Or whatever it is you have, Radha Krishna or God Nita Jagannathji. But the, the point is uh, treat him as a person. Eh? And then he will treat you as a person. It's very beautiful, actually. It's, it's so beautiful to be with the deities huh? as much as possible. Is it okay? Yes, Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you um, uh, yes, Prabhu. Like, actually, it's like a very nice thing what you said. But usually I have an assumption that you offer prasad, I mean, boga, and then close the door and come so that Krishna can have it. So yes. I'm, I'm yes. so like yes, uh, you are saying, like we can sit with him and then, you know. Yes, so you can close the door and still sit there. So you okay. can close the curtain of Krishna or, or door, okay. whatever you have, and then still sit there. Be, be in the service of Krishna as an attendant, waiting for master to get a call. Now, if you're involved in other activities, Krishna may be shy to ask you another chapati, isn't it? <laughs> yes. So, and it also says, again, in idealistic scenario, you should not work in the kitchen while Krishna is eating. Why? Your spiritual master is taking extra chapatis, extra rice for the deities. Huh? So, you should not work in the kitchen too much on that, again, as much as practical. Um, we cannot define a hard line here. Why? Because our spiritual master, who is actually serving Krishna, and we are attending the needs of spiritual master. So in this kitchen, suppose, you know, you have, you know, 15 chapatis made. So you offer four in the plate and then leave the 11 chapatis as it is. You know, do not start working on those 11. Okay, I've offered and then I can take. So these things has to be understood in a principle at least. Huh? My spiritual master is taking extra two chapatis. Giriraji needs extra two chapatis. He can have all 15 chapatis. And then he'll put 15 back as well. Huh? Even if he doesn't, we'll be so, so lucky, so fortunate. Uh, the point here is we are attending to the needs of Krishna at that time. Huh? Um, it's not done. Okay, it's done over, get out, do something else, make a phone call and then come back and pick up the plate. No, when you go knock Krishna's door and then say, Krishna, have you accepted my offering? Huh? You can ask your spiritual master, is Krishna satisfied now? Huh? Then you pick up the plate with full respect as if you will pick up a plate from your guest. Guest will say, Hare Krishna, Mataji, I'm fully satisfied. I cannot take it then only otherwise you'll keep serving the guest that's your duty you're the host please take please take please take huh? unless he shouts he roars like a lion he says he roars like a lion Nahi, no i don't want any more then you will stop why not to krishna why not to krishna now who is serving here your special master is serving if you don't have one says Srila Prabhupada is serving krishna be there be there huh? attendant is there <laughs> we are servant so we are just being there and a spiritual master, if you need, and Krishna will inspire you. Oh, um, sabji mein avak nahi dala. there's no salt in the sabji. It will happen. That's why ideally, I, I remember on devotees he's always put extra salt in the, uh, on the plate, on the side, always. You go to Mayapur, when they serve the feast, they always give you salt extra, always extra salt. Today I was eating <laughs> prashadam and salt was less, to be honest. But I was like too lazy to get up and get... <laughs> Well, and then also I have to ask Krishna, you know, his salt is in his possession, like who cares? But the point I missed out, not for my thing I'm talking, Krishna also had to accept less salt. So ideally I should have put extra salt in the plate so Krishna could have a nice quinoa. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's my fault. But these principles are so nice. You treat Krishna as a person, person, me, like me, at least like me. <laughs> like we like to have, sit down nicely and someone's serving, isn't it? No one likes to get up in the middle, wash hand and take extra chapati. Sometimes you need sabji and if you are alone in the house, will you take sabji? <coughs> Many times. It's okay. <laughs> Just finish it. 
So if my attendant is there, uh, extra Vaishnava is there, then you'll say, Prabhuji, can I have some more sabji? Huh? Can you serve me one more chapati? That's very nice. And that's why Prabhupada said, you should eat together. By eating, our devotion increases. So we should eat with devotees, actually, as much as possible. Huh? Eating is just not an activity of sense gratification. It's actually devotional service, if you take it like that. And it's very nice. And you, you eat in the temple, you eat at home when you're alone. So different, so different. Huh? So every activity of Krishna consciousness can be very personalized, personalized, or it can be impersonalized. And many times we become very impersonal. All the so-called devotees, we become impersonal. So as more personal we become towards the deity, towards a spiritual master, at least in principle, now every time we may not be able to follow all the things. In principle, Krishna, I want to feed you nicely. I want to decorate you nicely. I want to talk to you, talk to Krishna. You may not hear his response back right now, but he will talk to you. Prabhupada said, um, once you become devotee, a pure devotee, you can talk to Krishna as good as I'm talking to you. Krishna said, you can see Krishna, you can talk to Krishna as you're talking to me. So Prabhupada said that Prabhupada cannot be wrong. Huh? It will happen. Now, when and how it depends on our sincerity, but it's going to happen. Prabhupada said, you can talk to Krishna face to face. You can see Krishna and uh, you can talk to Krishna. Prabhupada said that. So it is going to happen one day. Prepare for it right now. You talk. To, you start talking to the deities. Huh? You start talking to Krishna. Even if deities are not there, you can remember your deities in your mind wherever you are. And you can pray. If you need something, you can pray. Nothing wrong with that. And slowly, Krishna will inspire you in your heart and you should, you will be able to listen, Krishna. What should you do in this circumstances? Because many times, most of them, we are confused. Krishna yeah. will speak back. The problem is we are not speaking to Krishna. <laughs> so, very nice. Okay, I'll... Uh, Thank you so much, Prabhu. It really gives so much, uh, you know, uh, love to serve Krishna in this way, rather yeah. than just keeping the food and then, you know, yeah. closing the door and come back. This yeah. way is really nice. Thank yeah. you, Prabhu. We should try. We should try. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Tanya Mataji, for asking that nice question. <laughs> Priya Mataji, what do you want to add? She's a good pujari. She has a big deity in her house. Ah, sorry. No, Prabhuji. We are still in the learning stage. Uh, Prabhuji, actually, um, I wanted to ask, when we are, uh, you're saying that Krishna, you know, eating prashadam is also a devotional service, like you're having it with devotees or whatever. So um, does that mean um, that it considers a karma then? Is there no action? Yes, yes, Prabhuji. It's always an inaction. But the inaction can um, also be very interesting or it can be a little boring. So when we are with devotees, every action is so beautiful, so beautiful. Whether you are eating prashad, whether you are going out, looking at the nature, whether you are speaking about shastra, whether you're talking about your service, or maybe you're revealing your mind to it. Everything is beautiful with devotees, everything. And it's always our karma, whether you are eating alone or with devotees, because Krishna has accepted that offering. At least we take that as a principle. Now, if you're dumping on Krishna, obviously Krishna is not going to take that. <laughs> Krishna is looking for your love. So every offering we make, whether it's a small nuts offering, fruit offering, or a big bhog offering, try. Krishna, please, I'm, I'm not eligible to offer you, but please, and, and try to pray to your spiritual master straight away. When you're on the altar, go with the spiritual master, come back to the spiritual master. Tell the spiritual master, I'm very you know, impure um, in my mind, in my activity, maybe while making bhoga also, I made so many mistakes. But please, you request Krishna. And then I personally personally request to Krishna and I personally request to my spiritual master to please convince him to have this. Not that it's so good, just because, you know, I made it, I put some effort and I want with this effort me to get more purified. And I also pray that's possible for everyone to tell me in whatever way what mistakes I have done so I don't make those mistakes again. So the spiritual master can talk with many mouths, it says, huh? The spiritual master does not have one mouth. He has many, many mouths. Huh? So with some devotees somewhere, you, you will be known that you made this mistake in bhoga offering. So the spiritual master will reveal what mistake you made. And then uh, you will know what not to do again. We all make mistakes. That's fine. But uh, keep praying to your spiritual master. Please let me know what mistakes I'm doing so that I can try to reform myself and not repeat the mistakes. Big subject matter, <laughs> but it's very nice. Shariram Kevlam Karma. If you remember last uh, third chapter, there was a word called Shari Yatrapi. Huh? 
Sharir Yatra, Shariram Kevlam. It's very, very nice. So for the body, basically the point is we should not over overdo it. Huh? Whatever is needed, we definitely do. Huh? If the body has a problem, we go to the doctor and treat it and do whatever is the needful. Don't overdo it and don't uh, have false hopes with this body. False hopes. Hoping is good. False hoping is not good. Huh? Anyway, let's move forward to our today's discussion. Only starting at 8.40. <laughs> anyway, good discussion. And last week, uh, because there were less devotees, I could do more verses. <laughs> Anyway, the point here is we should learn something practical. Uh, that's the success. We, if we can come even one millimeter closer to Krishna, that's the success of uh, this class or the course for all of us. Okay, 422. Can I request Nidhi Mataji to do that? Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Mataji. <clears throat> समहासिद्धावचिद्धावचिद्धावचिद्धावचिद्धावचिद्धावचिद्धावचिद्धावचिद्धावचिद्धावचिद्धावचिद्धावचिद्धावचिद्धावचिद्धावचिद्धावचि
actually you can choose to be satisfied or unsatisfied it's your choice so a, a person who is satisfied yadrach whatever love he gets is satisfied huh? he does not aspire or i should rather say hanker for more and more and more which people generally in the world do they they hanker to become a, a big ceo um, a tenor of multiple properties and big position big roop <laughs> And, and and what not dwanda tito vimasra so dwanda refers to dualities of this world what does dualty refers to sometimes you'll get sukha sometimes dukha sometimes you'll be happy sometimes you'll be not so happy um sometimes you'll get gain sometimes you'll get uh, victory sometimes you will get defeats uh -huh. you go out in a bus or a public transport for example is given bhagavatam actually not the public transport example but when you go out many time you get disrespect huh? some people on the road will just tell you something which you don't like some people in the crowd in the school bus you you'll be feeling uncomfortable huh in bhagavatam fifth canto um jad bharat is speaking to rahul gandhi is calling this is like breaking your teeth the teeth is refers to our false ego so our false ego gets broken many many times that's called a defeat huh you didn't want it it happened so this called dwanda in this material world who can stop dunda it says no one no one can stop dunda all you can do go beyond it as radha maharaj said no go beyond it you can't stop the waves of the water you can go beyond it so dunda ti to vimasara so vimasara refers to non envious so we should become non envious of others so he has a better car he has a better house he has a better iphone and better laptop and what 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 so we can have you know so much desires in our heart to gain what all this person has huh but we must sir you're not envious of anyone at all if you are like that in one more quality um samaha you are equipoise in siddhi and asiddhi which i think already explained siddhi means perfection perfection when you refers to victory i desired something i got it huh very nice asiddhi i desired something but i didn't get it huh i desired to be a ceo but i ended up in a simple uh, assistant that's okay that's called asiddhi samaha siddha asiddha cha you should be equipoised samaha siddha dwanda ti so you are beyond the dwanda the dualities of this material world you are vimassaraha you are non envious of others if you are like that so 1 2 3 4 qualities are given in this verse right if you are like kritwa api kritwa very first you are doing lot of activities in the material world nane badhyate you will not be bound beautiful verse beautiful verse very hard to follow <laughs> but at least we can try at least we can try when you get defeat after even you trying honestly um it's okay it's okay to get defeated <laughs> everyone gets defeated only one person does not get defeated who is that lord vishnu <laughs> his name is ajit huh? who cannot be uh, who cannot accept and cannot be defeated yeah he can be defeated rasa wise by his devotees he accepts the defeat huh? his name is ajit in eighth canto of shrimad bhagavatam we read his name um all of us will be defeated um mental platform physical platform emotional platform uh, mostly we get defeated these days not on physical platform so much on emotional platform isn't it <laughs> we all get defeated we like to hear some nice words we like to see some nice things but uh, <laughs> everything goes unexpected in our life so what can we do samaha huh? samaha this is krishna's plan you just chill maharaj vyas the conversation in due course of time just follow krishna's plan as best as your capacity and it will be revealed why it was done that way 423 um who hasn't done as are krishna it? prabhu small yes, question sure madam ji uh prabhu in the previous verse right uh, sad uh, there are four qualities like we should be satisfied with whatever we get naturally free from duality free from envy and study in both success and failure right so free from duality is like what duality here so sukha dukha man apman labh hani uh, so there are yeah. six qualities given in bhagavad gita so i'll just study. translate so yes. happiness yeah. and distress uh gain and defeat loss. Gain, and loss. Yes. gain and loss and man and apman means uh, insult or or praises so these are the mm. six dualities we'll talk about it i wanted to talk i didn't <laughs> we'll get into it so it will be explained more in the sixth chapter we'll talk there more detail okay. with all the examples of it yeah sure can i just add one point on this yes okay uh, i just heard uh, radhesham prabhu was one of the class i'm just he was explaining he was just saying you know while you eating something you know you may like it or you may not like it or when you go on a transport you may like the travel you may not like it so this is what he is talking about the dwelling 
So you explain like that. Yeah, and yeah. So, so Sukha and Dukha. Sometimes Sita yeah. and Ushna. Huh? Sometimes you like it, sometimes you don't like it. Sita Ushna does not just refer to a physical heat or cold. It also refers to our Sukha and Dukha in terms of what I like and what I dislike. Radhishan Prabhu, based on that, I, I remember an example he gave of Sita and Ushna. Bharat Correct. Maharaj, when um, he was exactly. uh, pampered by his father, that was like a Ushna, very warm. Huh? When we go somewhere, we said they did a warm welcome. Warm welcome is very nice welcome. And his brothers were very cold. Huh? They were giving him burnt rice to eat. So that is called Sita and Ushna. Pleasure and um, impleasurable things. Thank you, Prabhuji. Okay, let's move forward, 23. Um, Sumit Prabhuji, Hare Krishna. Okay. Sorry, Krishna Mabuji. Sorry, Sorry. it was to unmute. <laughs> okay, uh, let me try. Gatsangasya Muktasya. Gatsangasya Muktasya. Jnana Vastita Chaitasa. Jnana Vastita Chaitasa. Yajya Yacharata Karma. Yajya Yacharata Karma. Samagram praviliyate. Samagram praviliyate. The work of a man who is unattached to the modes of material nature and who is fully situated in transcendental knowledge merges entirely into transcendence. Thank you, Guruji. So basically what a keyword we can take. So next few verses, we can just take some keywords to understand the principle. They are little bit, uh, um, you can say technical verses, huh? We don't need to go so much in technicality. So Gata Sangha, so we understand. So Sangha refers to attachment. We have read this word many, many times. Gata means to gone. Huh? So if Sangha is gone. We have read that. Mukta says, so he's Mukta. He's, he's liberated from that. Huh? So the main word which we can concentrate on this word, Yajya Acharta Karma. Huh? So Yajya Acharta Karma. Anyone remembers the Yajya definition from the third chapter? What is the definition of yajna in the third chapter, which we have read 3.9? Uh, offering to Vishnu. <laughs> offering to Vishnu. Thank you. So yajna also means Vishnu or offering to Vishnu. It's a principle. Huh? So it's also a physical form. There's a fire and what we call it so-called yajna. Uh, we call it fire yajna. But yajna is a principle and yajna is also a name of Lord. So when we do the activity for the Lord's sake, then we are muktasya. Huh? So, yajya acharat. So, acharat means uh, when we do karma, we are doing karma in such a way which is for yajya, which is for sacrifice for the Lord of the sacrifice. So, when we do yajya, so Prabhupada writes here, man who is unattached to that, so Gatsanga Samukta says, who is fully situated, transcendent, merges entirely. So, what will happen? Samagram praviliyate. Now, we have to understand this line very nicely as well. So what are we doing? Yajya Acharata Karma. And the second line, which impersonal is love. Samagram praviliyate. Samagram means merge ho jana, huh? to get merged. They love this word, samagram. <laughs> so, so there's an impersonal definition and explanation and there's a personalistic definition. So what he is saying, samagram praviliyate, samagram word does not refer to the person. It refers to the karma. Karma samagram praviliyate. So what is getting merged? Karma is getting much, not the person, not the person. Prabhupada also wrote, actually, it's a Rupa Goswami example, which Prabhupada wrote in um, NOD, Nectar of Devotion. Um, impersonalists take this example of river merging into the ocean. Huh? So they say, not we, they say, so we are like those rivers and uh, ocean is like Brahman. So when we go to the Brahman, we get merged and our personal identity get extinguished. Huh? It's, it's no more. But Prabhupada writes, Rupa Goswami writes, we are not like the river. Rupa Goswami says, we are like the aquatics in the river. We are like a fishes and other aquatics. When the river merges into the ocean, does the aquatic also merges into the ocean? Yes, but their individuality is maintained. And the Krishna gives an example, Prabhupada gives an example of second chapter, I think 2.12, he gives an example, a green bird entering into a green tree. So when a bird enters, a green bird enters into a green tree, you may not see it, but has the bird gone? <laughs> has the bird existence gone? The individuality of the bird is still there. Huh? So we have to understand the samagram refers to karma. So when we do karma for yajna, for Lord Vishnu, it is all taken up entirely. But that means we will not get any reaction because what we are doing is we are doing for um, Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu is like an example of soldier working for the government. So when he does work for the government, government rewards him. So when we do work for Vishnu, Vishnu will reward us. And what is the reward? Purification. 
And the eventual reward, so purification is the immediate reward and the eventual reward will be the liberation from the material existence. Huh? So there are two rewards of yajna. First is immediate reward. Immediate reward is purification. So yajna, another meaning of yajna, I think we discussed earlier, what I could use for my personal sense gratification, I'm using it for Vishnu. For example, uh, uh, a ghee, for example, when we give ghee in the yajna, we offer, you know, kela, we offer banana in the yajna. Huh? And some uh, outside person, why are you wasting your ghee? Ghee is so expensive. Huh? Kela is so expensive. Banana is so expensive. But the point what we are trying to get here, the, the things which I could use for my personal sense, I give it to Vishnu. And that makes me purified. That makes me higher because I'm working for someone else. Even in the material world, when you work for someone else, you get the higher pleasure. Uh, one research was done, very popular, uh, so-called modern research. Uh, four people were given task. Uh, they, they, they were given money. They were given some facilities. You go and enjoy the weekend as much as you like. And then come back and explain your level of happiness on Monday. So one went to you know drink alcohol. One went with his partner somewhere. One went, uh, you know, drugs or whatever, movies. Anyway, the fourth one went to an orphanage, an old age house, um, where he helped children and old people to do their day-to-day -day activities. Now, everyone who came back on Monday, uh, so the, the movie person said, oh, that was a nice movie. <laughs> so what's your plan? They said, I'll go for another movie. Huh? Second person who took alcohol, yeah, it was nice, but, you know, Sunday morning I was... What do you call the user word? I can't remember. <laughs> hang up, huh? Hang up? Something like that. The hangover. A hangover, hangover. Thank you, Prabhuji. <laughs> I had a hangover. Huh? Uh, and the third person, similar uh, explanation, but the fourth person who went and did something for the old people, for the orphan children, he said, actually, I'm feeling very happy. And his happiness is considered the best happiness because he worked for someone else. He gave pleasure to someone else. He said, the activity which just gives pleasure to us is, is nice, but with the activity which, which pleases others, uh, that is very nice. That, that's even higher. And the activity which pleases Lord Vishnu is the highest. And that's why we say when we love Lord Vishnu, when we love Krishna, then we love everyone because everyone is inclusive in Lord Vishnu. Krishna is like the, the mula, the root of the tree, and everyone else is like the leaves of the tree. When we water the root of the tree, the whole tree is satisfied. Tasmin tushte, jagat tushta. Huh? So when you're doing um, karma for the yajna, for the Lord Vishnu, then karma samagram, all your karma, action, reaction get burned. Huh? Next one, 24. Sorry, Prabhuji, one very quick question. Sure, so you said for yajna, the immediate reward is purification and then eventually... Liberation uh, from the material existence. Uh, yeah. So immediately we get purified, we feel happy. Raja Vidya Raja Goyam Pavitram Idam Uttamam Pratyakshava Gamam Dharmyam Susukham Kartum Abhyam. While you are serving Krishna, you feel happy. We are working in the kitchen or in the reception or doing any other activity for the Krishna. It's very pleasurable. You see, devotees are always happy. You see, they're beaming with a smile or happy. Huh? They may be tired, but they're still happy. Midnight, Janmasvi, one o'clock, everyone is tired, but they're all happy. Huh? You see a different happiness on the face of a devotee. If you talk about a car who's been fasting whole day, he will be cursing in the night time. I haven't eaten for 12 hours and this is wrong and that's wrong. I have to go back to work tomorrow. But in Janmasvi, you see devotees, they're just happy, enthusiastic. They're serving Krishna in the midnight. They go back to their words again, respective words. Huh? Everyone is just so happy. Huh? This is the difference between Krishna karma and uh, personal karma. Huh? Priya Mataji. Uh, yes, Prabhu, actually, uh, in relation to what you just said, I think uh, Kishori Mataji, that she sent that video, and that video is uh, having some devotees who are like um, elderly devotees, and they're uh, in the kitchen cooking, and they mentioned one of them was saying that once they come out of the kitchen, dry, while they're doing the seva and the bhoga, making bhoga for the Lord, they're, um, even though they're not well or you know, they forget about their external suffering, but once they're out of that, you know, yeah. transcendental activity, they oh, they realize, oh, you know, all this pain is there. So. They're, they are above 80. That Mataji is above yeah. 80 years. And yeah. what she said is like, she will not even, she feels like she's very young when she's cooking. Yeah. 
And as soon as she's out from the kitchen, I think she was saying she had a lot of leg pains. For leg something. pains, yeah. And she's saying, when I'm standing there for two hours for Lord. For four cooking, hours, yeah. I don't feel anything. Did you hear that story of uh, they had to, the, the both the tiffin boxes were taken for Jagannath Rath Yatra. <laughs> and then she had to cook again within 20 minutes. The 20 whole minutes. Time. That's amazing pastime of Radha Gopinath. It's totally amazing. So Radha Gopinath is, is eating. He's there. He's there. Beautiful uh, video. Um, okay. Sorry, can if someone finds that video, can you send that to me? Sure. sure. Uh, yeah, sure. We can do that. <laughs> very nice video. It's 20 minutes or something. It's very beautiful. It's a story just for others who don't know. A story of the devotees from Chapati Temple. Um, and very elderly devotees who've been there for the last 40 years or so. They've been serving the Lordships. And they are explaining their, their experiences in their services with the Lord. And many live experiences. Uh, some Matajis and Prabhujis are sharing. It's, it's just related to the kitchen department, actually. Just Prashadam department. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, if you have time, 20 minutes or so, please watch. Um, Mataji can do it. Um, which I go Mataji or Prabhuji? So my question is, you were mentioning about the story, like when someone is offering food to someone and they feel happy for it, no? when you're doing something like, like, but instead of that, if when you're doing to Krishna, there is something more happiness, right? But when I'm seeing that, you know, a lot of people are involved in this philanthropic kind of work, you know, offering food or offering some orphanage, people going and giving some material to them and other things. But then when new kind of people, when we explain to that, you do this for Krishna, I mean, how do they get the feedback? You know, how Krishna is pleased like? Yes, yes. How is that question? Yes, very, very nice and practical question. So basically, Prabhu is asking, we feel some, some sort of joy when we are serving Krishna, but how do we explain the similar thing to outside people who are in, involved in so-called mundane good activities? So they are good people. They are pious people. They're doing some sort of help for the society, for the other people. But how can we explain them this? This is the best joy. So Prabhu, initially, what I have heard, I'm just trying to repeat, um, they will not understand. <laughs> they will not understand. Their, their buddhi, their intelligence has to be purified. So initially, our main weapon is prashadam. <laughs> so whether they are pious people or impious people, when their intelligence is receptive, then only they will experience the joy. And in our cases also, we can see very practically, I very boldly saying, I came to temple for eating prashad, eating. <laughs> so that was my main reason of coming to temple. That's how I started and I continued. I still continue. <laughs> but many other things also came up while I was sort of eating prashadam. So um, they may not understand our philosophy in day one or day two, or maybe in year one or year two. But uh, if they are Purnivan, here Purnivan does not refer to just piety, a material piety, it refers to a spiritual piety. Uh, what we speak of Prabhuji, non-devotees, even devotees sometimes do not perform devotion um, nicely. They perform devotion in the mode of ignorance or passion. They hurt another devotees and all those things happen. So, and the explanation given is they have not actually done enough sukriti, uh, enough piety, enough spiritual piety. So Krishna is not revealing them how to perform this activity which will please me or my servants. You are disturbing my, my other devotees actually. But Krishna is kind and his servants are very kind. They are very, very tolerant. So they tolerate. So this principle applies actually Prabhuji on higher or lower level everywhere, even within us. Huh? Sometimes we are nice devotee, sometimes we are not so nice devotee. But by eating prashadam, by keeping association of devotees, slowly and slowly we are realizing our mistakes. And Krishna Maharaj gave one example, very nice. He said, uh, suppose a room is or a house is locked for last 20 years or whatever, right? Now when you open the house, there's a lot of dust and this and that, it, but it said you can still walk in. But as soon as you start grooming, what will happen? A lot of dust will come. Huh? Like you're unsettling the dirty water. So initially, we are all dirty. Huh? We have so many anarthas in our hearts. So initially, we feel like actually we are good. But after being in devotion for few, actually we feel like actually we are the worst one. <laughs> really, we feel like that. Huh? It's not, oh, Prabhu, you are so humble. Actually, Prabhu, it's a reality. But initially, we felt we are so good people. Why? The dust is unsettling now. Huh? So dust is everywhere. But unsettlement is good. After some time, all the dust will be gone. And then the clean water will be in our heart of, of Krishna Prema. Huh? Uh, takes time. We should just keep trying. One uh, more thing, Prabhu, just in relation to this absolutely. one. 
I heard in one of the lectures, uh, I think Radhanath Swami Maharaj's lecture, uh, what they are saying is like two ways. Uh, every mother um, uh, likes their children, but monkey, uh, if you see, uh, compare between monkey's child, monkey's baby child and the kitten's baby child. Mm. So uh, when monkey, uh, monkey's baby is uh, moving here and there, so it is monkey's baby who has to hold mother tightly. If it is not hold tightly, it will fall and mother will go away. Like it will, it will go on its own. So it is up to the child. So the people who are not in bhakti are same like this. They are on their own. They are trying to reach on their own. So it is their wish how tightly they want to hold. Similarly, kitten's uh, child, whereas um, cat will hold on the mouth and take the child. So it is like uh, when we are in bhakti, it is like that. Like uh, Krishna will hold you and take. So Krishna is always with you. So thank you, Madhuri. Very very nice example. Uh, so when Krishna will be holding, devotees are holding you in their mouth. So even the kitten is going here and there, here and there. The cat is, is holding the the kitten in, in in her mouth. So Krishna will take her. So this example was also given. Uh, I heard in one lecture. Sarv dharmanu paritej mame kam sharanam jam. What does it mean? Krishna will uh, take care of us. Krishna will hold you in your mouth when you do sarv dharmanu paritej. Very nice. Uh, Priya Mataji. Uh, yes, Prabhu. I just wanted to add that uh, I was hearing also with. Well, I don't know if it was the. I think it was um, in some lecture, but I wasn't. Prabhupad when he was there in. Um, uh, Boston and he was doing um, also New York yes he had the matchless gifts and he used to do, conduct the classes and then they, uh, some devotees or, or some the, at that point of time they were um, uh, the hippies there then they would want to uh, go outside and um, probably escape the class or escape that uh, that uh, class at that point of time and then Prabhupada would be big bucket of gulab jamuns outside the classroom and that gulab jamuns, they, he used to, um, uh, when they would come outside, they would see the gulab jamuns and then they would wait until, oh, look, there's more gulab jamuns. So we'll just stay and wait for eating it. And while the time they're waiting, that it's, you know, by the time they're eating, someone will see them and ask, oh, what are you doing? And then they'll say, oh, we are just coming, you know. So they, <laughs> just to try and stop them, I guess, like just to, you know, just like they would not, they would not be able to um, escape that because the prashadam is, you know, the taste or higher taste is given there. And I think he mentioned that as a scorn bullets. So. Yes, yes, you're right. I heard that as a very beautiful. So Prashadam stops all of us. One was saying, any other forward Krishna consciousness, we may realize or no, but Prashadam is always realized form. You say any other form, you, you take Mala, you take Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita to someone, you'll be sleeping. You take Prashadam, even if he's sleeping, he'll be fully awake. Wow, cake, pizza, pasta. Fully awake. So this works. This works. Very nice. Okay, let's move forward. Uh, we'll probably do one or two verses more. Um, they are nice verses, and we can just uh, pick up some key points here. So, who has not done as yet? Rupam Prabhu, would you like to do this one? This is a tongue twister. I call this verse as a tongue yes. twister. <laughs> let's read that. Sure. Well, let me try, Prabhu. Um, Brahma, Brahma. Pranam Brahma Havir. Brahmar Pranam Brahma Havir. Brahma Gno Brahmana Hutam. Brahma Gno Brahmana Hutam. Brahma Ivatena Gantavyam. Brahma Ivatena Gantavyam. Brahma Karma Samadhina. Brahma Karma Samadhina. A person who is fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness is sure to attain the spiritual kingdom because of his full contribution to spiritual activities, in which the can the, consum the consummation is absolute and that which is offered is of the spiritual same spiritual nature. Thank you, Prabhuji. Well done. <laughs> so here the word Brahma is used again and again. So you see six times Brahma word is coming. So Brahma, 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 Brahma and Brahma. So two, two, two and one, one. So six times the word Brahma is coming here. So basically what Prabhupada is writing in his translation, as you can see very clearly, he's used this word Brahman as 
per Krishna consciousness. Now, again, this can be have multiple um, interpretations. Prabhupada is saying a person who is fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness is surely is sure to attain the spiritual kingdom. So Brahmahar Param. So Arpanam, everyone knows Arpan Karna to offer Brahmahar Param. So whom we are offering to Brahma. Uh, now here again, Brahma referring to the Krishna. Uh, we are offering to Brahma. Havir Brahma. So Havir refers to butter. So what do we offer in, in uh, Yajna? For example, ghee. <clears throat> so ghee here, Prabhupada is writing butter, but uh, ghee or butter, right? So we are offering. Why Prabhupada writes butter? Anyone knows? Why not ghee? It's a very sort of side question, not a technical. For Western devotees, maybe. Exactly. So Prabhupada was very because aware of Western, the audience. So if he writes, huh? in, because in Western side it's called as clarified butter. Yes. That's the reason Prabhupada used the word yes. butter. There. Thank you, Prabhupada. I just just wanted to make sure everyone understands. So we all understand ghee more than the butter. Why is butter? Uh, in India, if you call a Brahman and say put butter in the agni, he will be shocked. <laughs> what? <laughs> But uh, Prabhupada is writing butter just to make sure his audience understand what is given in the verse. It's a ghee. Huh? So, Brahmagno, Brahmana Hutam. So, basically, in Huta, so Huta is Ahuti, whatever Ahuti we give, like we are having the Yajna in the temple, we are offering grains. All of us had a plate of grains we were offering. So, that's a Ahuti. So, Brahmaib Tendam Tamil. So, he will achieve Gantabhyam again, the first destination. So, he will achieve Brahman. Brahma Karma Samadhina. So, he will be doing all activities as per Brahma activity. So, basically, what this verse is saying in a simple language. Um, Every activity of your life can be spiritualized, can be made a Brahman activity. Brahman activity means Krishna conscious activity. So you can spiritualize every activity. And for that purpose, you don't have to go somewhere else and perform yajna. Like what Arjun was saying, I will perform yajna somewhere else, like in a jungle, for example. Not here, because this I don't see as an yajna. And in the previous verse, 420, yajna ya charta karma. So what you should do yag, uh, karma for? Yajna, for, for yajna, for sacrifice. So Krishna is saying, this is Vishwanath Chakrit Thakur explanation. I'm just sharing. So Krishna is saying to Arjun, actually, Arjun, you don't have to go to jungle to perform yajna. This itself is a yajna. And Vishwanath Chakrit Thakur gives the explanation. So yajna is like whenever we're doing yajna, there has to be a place of yajna, right? So that Yajna Sthali, Vishnu Chakra Thakur says, the battlefield is a Yajna Sthali, huh? the place of Yajna. Now, what is the Havi? What is the Ghi there? Huh? Sorry, what is the Ahuti there? Ahuti is, Korvas are the Ahuti. Who is dying? Like when you put a grain in the fire, the fire gets burned, right? So <laughs> who is dying here? Korvas are dying. So Korvas are the Ahuti. What is Havi? What is the ladle of the, the, the spoon? You know, a Pujari used a spoon to put the Ghi. What is the spoon here, anyone? Can guess what the spoon is? The bows, the arrows of Arjun. Huh? Because they are carrying the Shakti and they kill the Korvas. So Korvas are the Ahuti and the arrow is the ladder, which is Arjun. Arjun is like shooting the arrows and, and putting the Korvas in the fire of Yakya. So this itself, and who is accepting Brahma? Brahmaivtein Gantabhyam. So you will achieve Brahman, for example. So who is the achiever here? Who is the taker of all these sacrifices is the Brahma, is the Virat Purusha, because Virat Purusha will be shown in the 10th and 11th chapter. Huh? Virat Purusha is accepting the offering. Um, I, I'm sure you would have read in Bhagavad Gita uh, in 11th chapter where Krishna is saying to Arjun, or you would have seen in B.R. Chopra Mahabharata as well, all the Korvas are entering into the fire-like mouth of Krishna. Huh? You remember that? And Krishna is chewing them sort of. And the blood is coming out and even Bhishma, Karna, everyone is going to the mouth of Krishna. So who is accepting this Korvas offering made by Arjun is uh, Virat Purusha. Huh? So basically what um, Krishna, Vishnu Chakra Thakur explains in this verse uh, explanation that Arjun, you don't have to go anywhere. This, this battle itself is a yajna. Right? And that makes sense. That makes sense. If you are doing for yajna purush, for Krishna. So for Krishna's pleasure, if you shoot arrows and kill Korvas, Actually, that's a yajna. There is no point of thinking. It's a simple activity. Okay. Okay, we'll stop here. It's 9.14. Uh, we have done uh, three, two, two verses, grace, three verses gracefully. <laughs> that's very nice. No problem. Next time, we'll, we'll do some extra verses. So thank you for attending the catch-up class. I know it's midweek and it's a little difficult for a few people. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Oh,